guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another wonderful episode, a live episode of the TOEFL IBG, uh, TOEFL IBG, oh my God, IBT. I'm your host, Arsenio, as usual. First and foremost, this is another simulcast, all right? I'm in my office, though, so there's a little bit of an echo, so I must apologize for the little bit of an echo. All right. And so I just wanted to I just want to say hello, Tomato. Thanks for tuning in. For those of you who are watching me on my video. OK, and I'm probably going to start like giving this link out to a lot of people so I can do a lot of communicating through one or another, like a live webinar. That would actually be pretty cool. But nonetheless, I'm actually recording here on Zoom. So for those of you who actually want the video without all the echoing, and I apologize for everyone out there. Parents are over downstairs, so I have to come upstairs and there's a little bit of echo. But if you're listening to this in podcast form or watching the video, it's perfect because I'm actually using my microphone, okay? So with that being said, we are here again. I do like the background. I do love the chair. I love the little bit of, you, you know, like the pushback that I have here, okay? Nice environment, all cool. There's a lot of things going on. Well, not many things going on in my office, so I'm very, very grateful for that. So nonetheless, here we go. Total speaking question two. I was going to do the number three, so let me explain to you what's going to be happening today. Now, remember, I have a document. I have this video. If you're watching this in video, you don't have to worry about it, and you see everything. But for those of you who are watching me here, it's a little bit different, okay? Okay. Today, I'm going to do the speaking question two, all right? But I'm not going to record my response because anytime I record with my microphone right here, it ends up being a huge echo. Now, if I'm downstairs in the living room, it's much better. That's how I ended up getting a 30 because there's no echo. But here, there's going to be a significant echo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the introduction to the reading and then the note-taking process, the transitions, just as I had done probably about two, three weeks ago. Some of you probably didn't watch that video. Some of you are going to tune in live. And you're going to watch me right now. So this is going to be a win-win for everybody, okay? So with that being said, so grateful for today. We are going to be diving into this. This is the first time I've actually ever done this one before. It's on myspeakingscore.com. I will write that down on the document for those of you who are actually watching me here. Okay. Myspeakingscore.com. You can actually check this one out. I believe it's under Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. All right. And so with that being said, okay, if those of you and for those of you who do not understand, I'm going to give a nice breakdown of all of this again. What ultimately happens when it comes to the speaking questions is you are not being graded on your what, what you say, but how you say it. The speaking rate, the sustained speech, et cetera, et cetera. The more you add pauses and fillers, the lower your sustained speech, speaking rate, uh, distribution of pauses, it goes down, down, and down, unfortunately. Those are the three out of six most critical categories when it comes to TOEFL IBT. If you haven't already seen my recent IG post in regards to one of my students getting a 24, hey, she has a tendency of stretching the word. So instead of like having those pauses and saying, eh, eh, she stretches the word saying, and so the student ends up, and so when she started stretching it, I'm like, oh my God, don't stretch it so much. What's going on, Mafe, by the way? Mafe, Paravan. Oh man, I haven't seen you in a long time. Let me know if you actually took the test again, okay? But nonetheless, she has a tendency of stretching the word. And guess what? If you see the template that I just posted to, what is it, two posts ago, she got a 24 out of 30. That was on her first go, too. And so maybe instead of saying, eh, 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 you could stretch the word such as what she did. So go listen to how she did it. And then we are going to just go from there and you have a better idea. So I guess that's just one way of approaching it. I can't say that that's going to help you entirely, but it only affected one category, rhythm. And her rhythm, I believe, was still about a 60 nonetheless. So that's actually a great approach. So nonetheless, here we go. Let's dive into this bad boy. We have a reading. It says right here, remedial classes canceled. Ay, ay, ay. All right. And so by looking at this, what we're doing, what we're oh, first and foremost, we have to identify whether or not it's a letter or an announcement. Okay. 
So if we look at this, I'm always going to say this in a passive voice, and it's the structure that all of you need, all right? An announcement was made by a university, or a letter was written by a student stating that, or maybe even suggesting that. There are different gerunds that we could use, okay? But nonetheless, that's how I'm always going to start it off. I'm not going to use something entirely different because I know a lot of you out there, if you're watching this, you or if you're listening to this or watching this, wherever it is, you have a tendency, and I believe you have a tendency of literally just stating the obvious, okay? Stating the obvious in terms of, well, I know exactly what I was going to say, but I didn't say it. And then you end up messing up and it's hard to get into the rhythm. It's hard to get into the flow. So you need to know what you're going to say at the beginning. This is exactly what I do in all my coaching. you got to know your structure no matter what. This is absolutely important, okay? So by looking at this, it says remedial classes cancel. I'm going to hurry up and grab this. I'm going to put it onto the document. Do not worry, you guys could just ask me later for the document and for the video so you can watch it here and listen to, you know, the, uh, what is it, listen to the really, really good audio. But nonetheless, it says right here, remedial classes cancel. So we already have the main idea. We already know what's going to happen. So an announcement was made by a university stating that it's going to cancel remedial classes. I don't even have to read the first line to know what the main idea is. I already know what it is. Okay, make your life easy, people. And then we're looking for reason number one, reason number two. It's not always the case that you get reason number one and reason number two. It's not always the case, okay? Because what ultimately ends up happening is there could be a suggestion. There could be two benefits instead of two reasons to why. It's all, sometimes it's all, it's negative, but you could have benefits too, all right? So, with that being said, it says here, the administration has announced that effective next semester, the university will stop offering remedial classes. So how are we going to break this down at the very beginning? An announcement was made by a university stating that it's going to stop offering remedial classes because, now I use the subordinating conjunction because, because I don't want to, Use a period at the end, and then after that, I'm going to say the first reason for this is because the second reason, no, 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 no. That's kind of what we want to aim for in our speaking, not the reading, okay? We want to aim for it in the speaking, not the reading. Got it? So what we're looking for, that first sentence, which I'm going to highlight right here on the document, and again, all of you can ask me later for this document. What's going to happen is that after that, we're kind of looking for the two reasons to why they're going to cancel remedial classes, right? In order for you to gain a greater clarity, you need to understand that you have to ask questions to what is being stated. So if remedial classes are being canceled, you need to figure out, oh, why are remedial class classes being canceled? After this, it says, this new policy applies to all academic faculties. Okay, and disciplines. Now, am I going to state that? Not necessarily. Hello to Andrea, by the way. I think you tuned into my lives quite a few times. So big shout out to you. Thank you so much for joining. Now, let me break this down. This is the reading portion of the speaking question too for those of you joining or probably joining midway through and whatnot. This new policy applies to all academic faculties and disciplines. Am I going to write any of that? No because I'm looking for the why are remedial classes being canceled? Why are remedial classes being canceled? That's my whole goal. So after this, it says the decision was prompted by a steady decline in enrollment. There it is. Okay, so if I were to write notes and you're going to see this on the document, all right? Remedial classes canceled, okay? Decline enrollment. And then the next one is, I'm going to state this right after, more and more students are hiring tutors from the university's modestly priced study buddy program for help with extra study and, and exam preparation. A recent university-wide survey confirms that a majority of students prefer working one-on-one -on -one with private tutors. Ta-ta! Such is what I do, right? I am the coach of TOEFL IBT, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, those are some pretty big sentences, and we have to 
We have to break it down to understand what is that second idea. Well, students prefer one-on-one -on -one tutoring instead. There it is. Student prefer one-on-one -one tutor. There it is. So if you're looking at the document and if you're watching me here, or whether it's on Facebook, on YouTube, or you're listening to me in podcast form, that is exactly what I am going to, that's what you're going to write. Remedial class is canceled. Reason number one, and I didn't write down reason number one, meaning I didn't write down the word reason and the number one, okay? I just put a hyphen and put decline and enrollment. And the last hyphen, the third hyphen is student or stud prefer one, as in the number one, hyphen one tutor. That's pretty much all you're going to be able to write within those 50 seconds. It's kind of technically a minute because they're going to repeat the, the entire question out loud. And then it's going to say, prepare your answer. And then the 50 second timer comes up. So you technically got about a minute to prepare. Okay, let's just put it that way. But nonetheless, remember, going back to the structure, I'm always going to say, okay, an announcement was made by a university stating that it's going to stop offering remedial classes because... Remember, an announcement was made by a university stating that it's going to stop offering remedial classes. Got the main idea. Because what? Decline enrollment, student prefer one-on-one -on -one tutor. So how am I going to put that together in a sentence? Now, I'm going to write that sentence out, all right? But nonetheless, it's going to say because there has been a decline in enrollment and students actually prefer one-on-one -on -one tutoring instead. That's all I'm going to write. I'm sorry. That's all I'm going to say. Now, I wrote down everything that I'm actually going to say. So remember to look at that document so you can see exactly what I'm saying. But this is what it looks like. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in. For those of you who are watching on YouTube and Facebook, and look at those three hyphens that I just told you about a minute ago. And what these three hyphens are, hello to Hulisa. Cruz and Brian Joseph. Oh, we got a lot of people coming in now. Okay. Now, just to get you guys up to par, to just to get you guys up to speed, I'm doing the total speaking question two. What it comes down to, tip number one, write it down. You need structure. What are you going to say at the very beginning? It's either an announcement or it's a letter. This one is an announcement. I am always going to say, an announcement was made by a university. Okay. Now, obviously, you could put the, you could say it in active voice and say, a university made an announcement. Okay. It's entirely up to you. But that's my approach. All right. So, a university made an announcement or an announcement was made by a university stating that, get the main idea. The main idea is always the title. The title right here is Remedial Classes Canceled. After that, we re need reason number one to why the remedial classes are canceled and reason number two. So a decline in enrollment and students prefer one-on-one -on -one tutoring, such as what I do, the TOEFL coaching. That's who I am. I am the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Nonetheless, I got the three hyphens right here. For those of you watching on YouTube, Facebook, listening to me in podcasts, here we go. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring up that timer right here at the top to time myself and see how I'm going or how I go about breaking this one down. And so here we go. Three, two, I'm sorry. Three, two, one. An announcement was made by a university stating that it's going to cancel remedial classes. And this is because there has been a decline in enrollment. And also students prefer one-on-one -on -one tutoring instead. 14 seconds introduction. That's how you're going to do it. That is how you're going to do it. If you look at the paragraph, okay, and you're going to get that paragraph on total, get that main idea and get the two reasons. I'll state that again. Get that main idea and get the two reasons. This is exactly what I need you to do because if we're able to do that, hey, you're creating that flow. You're creating that momentum. You're creating everything at the very beginning. You're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be real good because guess what? When you get that momentum and everything flows right after that, it's end game. It's easy. History, archive, done. Got it? So what's going to happen now is always the transition. All right? And so 
what I'm going to do with that transition, I'm going to make it easy, people. I'm going to make it real easy. The man, woman uh, agrees or disagrees because, I'm going to use because again. I'm not going to use stating. I'm not going to say any of that. Whatever I write in regards to what the man or woman says, it's going to link with because. I'm going to say that one more time. Whatever is said in regards to what the man or woman disagrees with, more than likely this is going to be uh, a disagreement because, again, canceling remedial classes, that's actually not that good. So whatever they say, whatever they say that is perfect in regards to what I could write down that follows the word because. Because of what, right? And this is how I'm going to take my notes. The reason I say that is because some people write words <clears throat> that is difficult to say after the word because, and then you end up faltering. So I'm going to figure out what part of speech goes best after the word because, and then I'm going to go from there. All right, so what's going to happen now? Phase two. You already know it's the note-taking time. I got my speaker right here. I'm going to press that audio. I've already got it ready to go and everything. Now, remember, for those of you who are watching me on IG Live here on Instagram, it's going to be an echo a little bit. If you want the full thing, I have a video being recorded right here, Facebook, YouTube. And for those of you listening to me in podcast form around the world, every single country, you guys are good to go. Now, if you want to watch the video, tune into my YouTube, okay? Or my Facebook page, Arsenio ZSL Podcast. Very easy to find. So if you want to see this video and you're listening to me right now in podcast form, you could go on over to those platforms. And if you want to follow me on IG with all the really cool stuff and all the TOEFL IBT reading techniques and all that good stuff, it's the same thing. Arsenio's ESL podcast, you can follow me very easily, okay? With that being said, here we go. It's note-taking fiasco time. Three, two, and one. I just don't know about this decision. Really? It sort of makes sense to me. Not to me. I don't understand the reasoning. I mean, shrinking remedial class sizes? What do you mean? The university claims that remedial class sizes are in decline, but still they owe it to us to provide more than one option for extra studying. Right. Remedial classes are great because you're in a group. For some subjects, like debate, group classes are a better way to practice. Okay, but what about the survey results? I don't know which students they asked, but not everyone can afford the study buddy program. Remember, those one-on-one -on -one sessions aren't free. Right. Unfortunately, remedial classes are only held a couple of times a week. I think a better solution would be to offer more remedial class times and see if more students can take advantage of those group classes before canceling the whole program. You have a point. Okay, so here we go. Now, I wrote down a lot. So for all of you, who are tuning in, you probably took some notes. Hopefully you were able to hear that on IG Live. Now, for those of you who are listening to me in podcast form, that was perfecto, okay? That was perfect for you to take all the notes. For those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, you got the best of both worlds. So here we go. Remember what I said at the very beginning. I said, the man, woman agrees, disagrees because, and then I said, what part of speech? will go perfectly after the subordinate conjunction because, so that we can smooth and glide right into our note-taking. I wrote down he. So right here it says, the man disagrees because he doesn't understand the reasoning. Do you see how smooth that is? So I want you guys to take notes right here, right now, okay? Big shout out to a Patty, a by the way. There's a lot of you that I haven't seen before. Maybe I've reached out to you guys, but I just want to say thank you for everyone reaching out to me and everything. I appreciate it so, so much. But nonetheless, after the subordinate conjunction because, put he or she and make sure those notes glide right into that reasoning, right into it. That's going to make it just so much easier for you to create that flow 
and that's what the goal is, right? And so if we look at this, I wrote down the university claims that remedial class sizes are in decline, but they should actually provide more than one option for studying. They're great because you're in a group and if you're taking a debating class or preparing for a debate, these are best done with groups. Second idea. Also, not everyone can afford the study buddy program, such as tutoring. The remedial classes right now are currently being held just a couple of times a week. A solution, ooh, and he did provide a solution. This is the first time I've actually heard this. And again, for those of you listening right now, on uh, mindspeakingscore.com, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I hope nobody's listening. A lot of these questions show up on ETS tests. Now remember, ETS is not the smartest of the bunch, okay? It's all about maximizing profit, making their lives easier. So they're just gonna recycle everything. Go through all of those different cities, more than likely you're going to have a very similar question on the test. If you want a help, by the way, I just want to help, uh, say hello to Sarah. But uh, nonetheless, um, for those of you, and I don't know where my train of thought was going, regardless of whatever cities it was, okay, there are on mindspeakingscore.com, this right here, these questions are going to be recycled. There we go. Got my train of thought. The academic writing task, you can go to the ETS website. You can ask me about that afterwards. Again, if you're listening to me in podcast form, reach out to me and follow the tribe on my Instagram. And for those of you on YouTube and Facebook, the best thing to do is to go on Instagram because to be honest with you, YouTube, Facebook, I just post on there for, you know, all shits and giggles, I guess you could say, for the lack of a better term. But my best test. If you want more academic writing, again, you already get 28 free ones on ETS and they grade it for you. On my best test, apparently they have 120 academic writing. Now, the reading sucks. It's the same shit that they've had on there since 2019. The listening is garbage. It's the same shit they've had on there since 2019. And the speaking questions, one, two, three, four, are totally useless. Okay, those are all obsolete, all outdated, probably between 2000 and 2015 type of questions. So don't use those. The only thing that's very useful on there are the integrated tasks because they're very hard to come across and the academic writing. Okay. So just wanted to give you guys that. But nonetheless, in terms of looking at this, my notes, and if I were to finish this off, I have 14 seconds right up here. Again, if you guys are watching me on IG, follow me on YouTube and Facebook, and you're going to see me break everything down and especially the timer. Okay. For those of you listening to me in podcasts, hey, you already know. All right, so here we go. I got 14 seconds already with the introduction, okay? Now what's going to happen is I have the transition and I have all my notes, which I just stated. There was a solution at the, men, at the end in regards to the man, okay? He said a solution to this would be offer more classes so that students could take advantage of group classes. My goal is for the next 45 seconds, break this down methodically and go through and say it all like I was just saying in the first part of the introduction. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Here we go. Three, two, one. The man disagrees because he doesn't understand the university's reason. The university actually claims that the remedial class sizes are in decline, but they should actually provide more than one option for studying. They're great because you're in a group. And such as debate classes, it's a better way to actually practice. Also, not everyone can afford the study buddy program and tutoring because it's just too expensive. So remedial is just held just a couple of times a week. A solution to the problem would be to offer more classes so that students could take advantage of group classes. These are the two reasons to why the man disagrees with the university's announcement. 57 seconds. There it is. Now, obviously, I told you guys that I would submit it and see what my score is, but I'm in my office and it's a little bit of an echo and stuff like that. So not going to be the best. But nonetheless, that's how you break down the TOEFL speaking question too. A beautiful live coaching for all of you out there. Again, on YouTube, I really don't know much folks on YouTube and stuff like that or my Facebook page. I just post it on there just for the old shits and giggles. But in podcast form, this is how you break it down. So for those of you who are interested, yes, I do have a TOEFL speaking course. It's only $14. I have the original TOEFL speaking course. I believe that one's $20 or $25. And I do have one 
on one coaching. For those of you on IG Live, you've probably been seeing a lot of my posts and stuff like that. If you need coaching in regards to the TOEFL speaking question, one, two, three, four, or any of the other three parts, you reach out to me on Instagram. And with that being said, another live down the drain. Thank you. So down the drain, a good way, by the way. Thank you so much for everyone who has tuned in, who will watch later. Everyone on the platform and listening to me in podcast form, I appreciate it so much. And with that being said, stay tuned for another one because we're going to continue breaking this down in totality. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next live over and out.